What is up guys, in this video I'm gonna break down a 90s UK garage remix of Charlie Puth. This is how it sounds. Ready? Let's jump straight into the project. Okay, so the first thing I do is, of course, that I find some vocals. So I found the original a cappella from Charlie Puth, and I think it's BTS. So what I did is that I dragged the file into Isotope RX to time stretch it and pitch it. So I've pitched down these vocals by minus three semitones, mostly because this YouTube video will then get a penalty because of the original vocals. And also because I like to add some weird flavor to these vocals. So they sound like this. Memories follow me left and right. I can feel you over here. I can feel you over here. You take up every corner of my mind. So it's put to 128 B BPM. I think the original is 101 BPM. So I don't use any of the other elements from the track. I mainly just want to work with the awesome acapellas. So I'm gonna break down everything. So let's just dive into the drums. So I have a kick drum. And it's really, really short because I have a busy bass line as well. Then I have these snaps here. Just adding some nice groove and texture. Then I added this clap. And there are some like ghost notes here to really drive some groove and rhythm. And they are quantized a little bit off the grid. Then I pulled in this hi-hat loop. And then I layered it with another hi-hat loop. This hi-hat loop is from my own sample pack called Lumafurs house package volume one you can check it out via the link in the description so basically what i wanted with these hi-hats was to pan the the one to the left and the other one to the right to add a little bit more of like stereo spread to the sound basically what i also did with these was to just move this second hi-hat loop a little bit to the right so each of the the hi-hat hits are not hitting at the exact same spot in in the grid so the transients are not like adding up too much Already a really solid drum group. Then I have this small perk thing. Also just to drive a little more rhythm. Then a shaker loop. Also just like a standard shaker loop from Splice. And then a ride loop. It's working really fine. Like, And this is mainly all of the elements that I will use for a drum loop. The last thing that I have it's this breakbeat that's being used in the intro. And there is like a lot of low passing going on, so we're moving a lot of the high end of, of the drums and also a little bit of the low end. So in terms of mixing for the drums, I don't do that much. For the hi-hats, I just add a little bit of EQ. Uh, for the shaker loops, I added the shaper box with some side chaining to dock the signal and then some panning to make the shakers move a little bit more in the stereo field. And then the ride loop also just has a little bit of EQ to remove a lot of the low end and mid range. I just want to have like that sparkly high end of the rides. And the break beat of course has like this EQ curve to it to remove uh, top end and a little bit of the low end. And then everything is being routed into a drum bus that has a little bit of bus compression. The needle is barely moving. Just to glue everything together a little bit more. Then I added the passive EQ just to boost the 3000k area. And then I'm using Neutron 3 to remove the low end because I route the kick drum to another bus. So this is just to make room for the kick and the bass. So that's it for the drums. Let's move on to the bass line. So for the bass line, I have this sound. And if you pay attention to the MIDI pattern, everything is not entirely on the grid. And this is what gives it that 
bouncy kind of feel to it. For the bass sound, I'm using Monarch from Native Instruments, and this just sounds amazing, adds a lot of character to, to the bass sound. And also like the volume are changing a little bit, so each note are not the exact same volume, and it's also changing the sound a little bit. I think it's because it's trying to emulate an analog synth, and I think it just fits the vibe totally. If we go to the mix track for the bass line, I do a little bit of stuff here. I use the kick drum as a sidechain uh, trigger input, so I'm routing this to a fruity limiter, and I'm, I'm using it in compressor mode and using the sidechain input trigger. So every time the kick drum plays, the signal is being docked down. And then for the bass line, I'm also doing a little bit of equalization, reducing the really like low subs a little bit with a low pass shelf. And then I'm re removing like some of the high end that's not necessary for this bass line because I have some other stuff going on that needs this area up here. And then one thing I'm doing is that I'm routing this bass sound to bass synth effect. This is mainly because this bass line is in mono, but I want to keep the punch of the bass line. So I'm sending this to a bass synth effect to add some chorus and some delay. And then I'm using, for this, I'm using Guitar X6. So just to add like a little bit of width to the sound. And then I'm finishing off with an EQ to remove low end. So I'm not getting any like weird facing issues. And then I'm routing the baseline, the bass send effect to a low end bus. So that's it for the baseline. Let's move on to all of the melodic components. So the most like dominant one is this organ bass. This is just amazing. And it gives you like that 90s house feeling to it. The sound is from Serum. And it's actually from my preset pack called Melum Serum Volume 1. You can also check it out via the link in the description. So I'm routing this to a mixer track. I'm actually not doing that much because I like the sound as it was. I'm adding Neutron 3 with a little bit of excitement to the upper range of uh, the organ. Then I'm using a transient shaper to get like a more like transient plug to the sound. So adding like this attack here. Then for the equalizer, I'm removing a lot of the low end because I have the bass that needs to have some space down here. Then I'm boosting this area at around 700 Hertz because it's where like some of the body and weight to the organ is sitting. And then I'm boosting like these highs up here because I want to give like a little bit more presence to, to the bass because this is like a really main element in the track. So I want this to shine through in the mix. And then the organ bass is being sent to an instrument bus together with a lot of the other instrumental stuff that has, that is happening. If we go on for like, this is in a drop. So I, in the drop, I have like these stabs here. And it's coming from Analog Lab 5 from Atoria and from this Prophet VS synthesizer. And I just love to use Analog Lab because they have so many, many different sounds that you can just flick through the presets and come up with something awesome. And to be honest, I don't think that I have used any like crazy processing on this. This is the MIDI pattern that I've used. So basically like some steps, adding some rhythm uh, and also being like quantized to be off the grid for some bounce. If you go to the mixer track, yeah, I only have the shaper box for some, again, some creative panning to play with stereo field and then neutron free to remove low end, a little bit of the top end because that was not necessary in the track. So let's move on. I have this synth pad down here, and this is like just one long sustained chord. And this is coming from, I believe it's from Omnisphere. Uh, it's called Symbol Jupiter 8 Pad. I don't think I did anything to the sound actually, because the sound was just really nice and mellow and just sitting there in the background. So just reducing the volume so it's not being too dominant in the mix, just to add some weight and some character. And then of course also being routed into the instrument bus. Then I have this little bit of weird thing. It's called Weird Synth Stab for a reason. So it's these like small 
it almost sounds like vocal steps to me. And it's also from Analog Labs 5 and it's from the SQ80, it's the synthesizer called. And it's just like modulating the sound in a really weird way and I really liked it. So I just play it on my MIDI keyboard and come up with like this simple pattern just on the G sharp. And then I'm panning it to the right a little bit. And again, nothing like crazy added, actually nothing added to the mixer uh, channel because when the sound is nice, I don't want to do something more because it's not necessary. And then this is being routed to the instrument bus. So everything gets like a same compression and equalization. I'm gonna go through this like later. The next I have these chord steps down here. And I think these are just like some chord steps from Splice. But what I did is that I added the Delay Free from Fruity and also some reverb and some EQ to move the low end. So we get like these crazy sounding chord steps. And if we listen to everything with the drums, the bass line and these melodic elements, it sounds like this. It just gives the track such a mellow vibe and I cannot just help it like bobbing my head along. So it's a good sign that it's really groovy. So I have two more elements um, for the melodic instruments and these are the Mellotron 5, which is this one. These are mainly being used in bridges and in breakdowns, buildups and intros. So it sounds like this. And it's just these like simple chords down here. And if you have seen any of my like latest videos on YouTube, you know that I have used this Mellotron so much because it just sounds amazing. There's like a lot of effects going on here. And to be honest, I haven't done anything like creative wise. I only use the EQ to shape the sound a little bit, removing low end, adding a little bit of boost here at the 4,000, 4,500 area, and then reducing a little bit of the super highs. And then this is also being routed into the instrument bus. And then next I have a piano just to layer up this Mellotron chords. And it just gives a little bit more of body to the Mellotron. Really awesome. Let me just go into the effects. And again, for the piano, nothing crazy. This is from Aturia Piano 5, and these pianos are sounding amazing. So this, this is actually the last of the instruments elements. So you can see all of the yellow ones are my instrumental things going on, and these are being routed into this instrument bus. Here I'm also using a bus compression, also with a little bit of gain reduction. I'm using the passive EQ, uh, removing a low end with a high pass filter at around 120 hertz, doing a boost at this 3000, uh, K area and the 5k area also, also doing like a broad bell boost and it's just to add some more like presence to these sounds and then I'm using a little bit more of EQ in neutron reducing this area that was a little bit like too harsh in a way and then boosting this area and what I like about these instrument buses is that you can treat all of the sound as one so it's a little bit easier when you're doing like this EQ settings and the compression uh, it just lose everything together a little bit more in my opinion. Then I'm using the Fruity Limiter again also for some side chaining. So that means every time the kick is playing it's actually reducing the volume a little bit of the, the whole instrumental boss. So it just means that it gives a little bit more room for the kick uh, throughout the track. So this is actually it for the all of these like instrumental bits. Okay, sorry to interrupt you, but I just want to let you know that I have launched a membership site where you can get exclusive access to sample preset packs, full FL Studio projects that I have made. You can also get some video track feedback on music projects that you're working on. So check out my membership site via the link in the description. Okay, let's get back into the video. I totally forgot one thing. I had like a, I have a break a bass sound, which I used in the breakdowns. And it's just following the root note of the chord. Really, really simple stuff. It's coming from Serum. Just this like simple patch with a, like a sine wave in the bottom and this like almost like square wave thing uh, for Oslo B and then like some low pass um, filter going on. Nothing really crazy. This is just being used to sit underneath the piano chords and the Mellotron chords in the 
in the breakdowns and the buildups. And these are like the EQ settings, just to not have it to be too crazy and too subby, and then a little bit of excitement to just get a little bit more grit to the sound. So now we're actually ready to move to the most exciting part, and this is the vocals. If we look at the whole track, you can see the whole uh, arrangement here with the intro, the buildup, the drop, uh, one A part and the drop one B part, a breakdown, a build up, drop two A part, a bridge, a drop three, and a drop three slash outro. So up here you have the main vocals, which are these. Memories follow me left and right. I can feel you over here, I can feel you over here. You take up every corner of my mind. So for this vocal, I haven't done anything crazy in terms of treatment. I think it's only some side chaining from the shaper box yes to dock it accordingly to the kick drum but then if we move into like these other bits down here this is where the magic happens so basically what i do when i'm working with like full acapellas is that i tend to find the areas in the song where it's meant for like intro breakdown build up stuff and then they might have like a like a chorus that's nice to use maybe for chopping stuff which i have done here also i'm reusing some of like this part here right. reusing some stuff from the original acapella so i'm basically just chopping it up into bits and sections that i can just rearrange in my own like remix arrangement because now we have for this like second breakdown here and build up this is like the next part next section of the original acapella Ever since the, the day you went away and told me how I in my head, yeah, memories. Then it's building up here. And then over here, I'm using like this bridge element. But you know, you're the one that got away. And even eyes, memories follow me left and right. I can feel over here. And then I'm using like this, I think it's the last part of the acapella, and I'm just looping an extra part of it down here. And it just works for like an outro. And then I'm like doing some boost in volume and some reduction in volume for different bits. The really crazy thing that I'm using in terms of the the vocals here is that I'm I'm like I like to chop them up and also for like doing UK garage stuff is to really chop the vocals. So basically what I've done here is that I have taken the entire like vocals here and then I, I press this button here and then I, I select chop and complex and then this one called beat shuffle and it just gives me a lot of small bits sections of the vocal something like that just gonna delete it and then i'm rearranging it finding cool bits that i can use as a new phrase in my drop and then i come up with this it sounds a little bit weird but Together with all of the other elements, it just works. I have added a ton of effects to this. And then start with the first one. The first plugin is the Transgate from Kilohertz, which gives it this like starter kind of effect. With just like a mix at around 33%. Then I'm using the Decapitator for some distortion. To get some grit and some texture to, to the vocal chops. Then I'm using uh, an EQ to remove a lot of the low end and also some of the top end to give it like a more lo-fi kind of feeling to it. And it just works really nicely. Then I have the Guitar X6, uh, and I'm actually just using the psych delay component and then using it in reverse mode. A little bit of mix at 8%, but it's just to add some more like random stereo stuff going on. And then I'm using the delay free. and neutron free to do a little bit of transient shaping because I want to like get some more of the transients forward from the chops. Uh, and then I'm using equalizer, removing low end and doing like this a little bit of a dip at around 500 Hertz because it was a little bit too muddy. And then I'm boosting at this almost 5,000 Hertz area to give a little bit more present to, to the chops in the mix. Then I'm adding an isotope nine imager and this is just to make sure that these are not getting too wide and maybe getting lost in the mix when I'm checking for mono capabilities, if it's working in mono. So I'm just reducing the, the stereo image in this area and in this area. And then boosting the volume a little bit, just to make sure that everything sounds nice in mono as well. 
Then I'm, I add a limiter. Just to get the, the vocal chops a little bit louder and also a little bit more squashed because that was the effect that I was going for. And then lastly, a sidechain from Shaperbox to make everything duck. So the ne next thing that I'm using is that I took the... I did the same approach, taking the full a cappella, but then I pitched it up 12 semitones and then I did like this vocal, uh, this chopping effect, this beat shuffle thing. And then found some other bits, like this. And then just adding them um, together with the other vocal chops, and it just adds like another like layer to these vocal chops. And it just works in a weird way. Last thing in terms of vocals, is that I like to take out small bits of the vocals and then add like a ton of reverb to them. So I get like these like reverb hits like this. Also this one. And then reversing them as well to get some sweeps. And it just works to have these like to build into sections. Together with these. So it just works. It's a really great trick to blend stuff together. So the last thing for the vocals, I like this these drop vocals part here. I added some extra effects to these just to make them sound a little bit different than the main vocals. So here I added some EQ, removing low end and also high end as the same thing with the chops. And then I'm using also Guitar X6 and this side delay, but with a little bit more mix than with the vocal chops. And then some side chaining from Shaper Box. Just to give like, so the drop vocal sounds almost the same as the, the chops because we're in the drop. And then when it goes back into the normal, Ever since the, the day. you get like this more like in your face kind of sound from the vocals. Yeah, that's actually it for all of the vocals. I did. I did went a little bit crazy with all of these edits and chops, but I think that's just what I was aiming for in terms of my style. I like to chop a lot. I like to transform the vocals a lot because then I can give it like my own kind of creative touch. And I think you should try that as well. So I think like the last bits that we can go through before we just touch upon the automation stuff is just these all of these effects down here. I added like um, this ambiences this is just like a field recording from a restaurant while i was on vacation in mallorca you can actually get a full sample pack that i have made we have recorded like everything from oceans waves people talking in the street it's a great way to add some texture and some warmth to your track so i'm just layering this underneath everything just to give it like some kind of warmth you can go check out the the sample pack it's also the link is also in the description down below i really encourage you to try to play around with these kind of field recordings in the background also i have like this beach recording here this is from splice but it's just sounding so nice to have this in the background so like together it's like really subtle in the mix but if you hear it like in this intro so i can, I can mute it So it just sounds like a little bit like static, uh, like it's missing something. There is not anything like texture wise when it's muted. And when it's in there, you feel like there's something like natural happening around the track. And I really like this kind of effect. So that's why I use it a lot. Then we can move on to like all of the other effects. This is basically like sweeps and like crashes, small like saps. More sweeps down here, like a snare build thing that going on here. So it's nothing really crazy to be honest, like in some transitional things here. It's basically just to glue together all of the different sections. So now we actually have everything going on here. 
Okay, so before going into the automation, I will just briefly show you the structure and arrangement of the remix. So here we have, of course, the intro. With the Mellotron and the piano and also the synth pad going on. And then when we're going to the build up, the organ is being introduced along with some of the stabs. Then we also have like this breakbeat thing going on down here that's being low coded. So really like pushing the build up towards the drop. One A part also with some sweeps and some snare uh, uplifter stuff. <laughs> So in drop one, A part, I have the vocal chops and also the pitched up vocal chops along with all of these reverb uh, hits for the vocals, the organ bass going on, the stabs, then the synth pad is being introduced here at this part of the drop. And then you also have like the bass and this weird synth stab and all of the drum elements. Then the ride loop is being introduced in this part as well. And then you have all of the effects. Then I have the B part where it's changing into uh, a section of the original a cappella. And along with the vocal section, also some shakers are being introduced. Then we go into the breakdown. And this is basically almost the same as the intro. The only thing that's a little bit different is that we don't use the breakbeat, but we use the kick drum and along with some of the drum elements. And then the build up starts here. And then it's almost the same as the build up one. We have like all of the effects down here, but then I just reduced like another uh, sweeping effect here. And then the drop two A part is basically the same as the drop one A part. I think the only difference is that I'm introducing both the shaker and the ride loop in this second part here. And then I'm doing like a bridge because there was some a section in the original vocals that was really nice. So I wanted to do like transition thing here. And here we have, of course, the, the other vocal section here. And then we have the organs playing through. Then I'm introducing the Mellotron and also the piano chords and the synth pad. So going here into the drop three, also some of the drum elements, the clap, the hi-hats, uh, and then there is being applied some automation stuff that I will touch upon later. So basically going into drop three and here is like a different kind of transition effect. So the kick drums are not hitting at the downbeat but they're just delayed a little bit. So we have like this kind of effect. And I think it's a really great way to add some changes to the, the remix and the drops as well. So it's not the same, just hitting and, and the downbeat. Then for drop three, I have like drop three slash outro. And this is basically just having this vocal section down here. I think this is also the outro for the original vocals. So I just loop this part. So it's a little bit longer. And then I have the pad being introduced. And everything just breaks down here. At the end. So yeah, that's the structure and arrangement of the remix. Now let's move into all of the automation stuff. Up here, I have a lot of like automation stuff going on and I can just expand them. So if you can see, I like to have everything like color coded because it just makes me work way faster and have a 
better overview of what I'm doing. This top one is just a, a volume plugin. So basically what it's doing is it's adjusting the master volume of the whole track. And I'm, I like to reduce the volume uh, for build-ups just before a drop because it just feels like the drop hits a little bit harder. I like to use it also in between drops to also make sm section changes happen a little bit like they feel a little bit more. It feels like it's louder, but it isn't. But it's just because the volume is being docked a little bit before the, the drop. Uh, so you can see it's I'm just generally just decreasing it in this, these build-ups and also in this section in the drops. So it's a really nice tip to add some dynamic changes to the track. Then the next one is a high pass filter. And this is just to remove like low end just before the drop in a buildup. And it's just an effective like DJ kind of style effect. And if you pair this together with uh, a delay, so this is just a basic delay from, from FL Studio and also a reverb from FL Studio. So this is the dry, this is the wet knob and also the wet knob here for the delay. And if you pair this together with the, um, a high pass filter it just sounds really really awesome it you get like this kind of washed out effect it's just amazing it's like a really really cool dj effect i just love it and then the last one is this magic plugin and if you are a faithful supporter on this channel, I think you have seen it before. It's the stereo from Kilohertz. And it just has this width knob. And basically what I'm doing is that I'm just automating the width knob and just producing the width just before the drop. Because then it sounds like your track is going closer to mono. And when the drop hits, everything just feels a lot bigger. But you didn't add I didn't add any like extra stereo to the drop. It's just like it's just the contrast from having like everything really narrow in the build up and then in the drop it's just normal but it sounds bigger so just try to pay attention to it Like a really, really awesome effect. I just have one more automation effect, and this is done on the drum bus, and this is just a low pass filter. So basically what it's do doing is it's just low passing everything when the buildup is happening. So everything just gets more like low passed and almost kind of disappearing, and then the drop hits. <laughs> See that the effect is happening other places also for the build-up. Then I have this bridge here with the drop drop free, and then it's doing something a little bit different. It's just uh, low passing everything on the down hit, but then it's generally reintroducing all of the drums. So you can hear like the I really, really like this remix. It just has so much character to it. So this is basically it for the for all of the elements. Let's just listen from like the build up towards drop through and yeah, just enjoy it.
So yeah, that's that's the Charlie Puth remix, like trying to do a 90s UK garage house vibe to it. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Okay guys, that was it for this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed the outcome. I cannot express how much I really like this remix. If you liked the video, it means so much to me if you would smash that like button or even subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support me even further, I have launched a membership site where you can get access to exclusive sounds, presets, and also getting access to full project files and also a lot of the sample packs that I have on my web shop. You can read more about it on the link in the description down below. So I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Peace. <laughs>